and welcome. Welcome to the Publisher Spotlight ILA Next Book Buzz. So today we're going to hear about books for all ages. And as I said before, I encourage you to comment in the, win in the chat window. Let us know who you are, what your email is, and the grade range you work with. Also, if you have any questions or comments or observations, and that would be helpful. And Becca is my colleague and she will call those out as we go along. So let's get started. These are all the publishers we're going to see books from today. So now is an appropriate moment to say, wow. So feel free to wow and we will move on. Let's start with fiction picture books, shall we? So you know these books. These are amazing. It's Anna King, Christopher Wyant, uh, You Are Not Small was a, was a Geisel winner and it was so deserving of that. These are funny and sweet and I have found them to be the perfect read aloud. So um, this is a really fun one. The, our, our lovable friends go to the beach and they're building this great sandcastle. But you know, there's always just one more thing you can do. So they keep adding to it, adding to it until it kind of falls apart. But sometimes just there's joy in the journey, right? So this is, it is not perfect. Next up, um, Cat and Juju, this is also from Two Lions, by the way. And I mean, Cat is incredibly adorable, right? And this is a story about a, a, a little girl who's not really an extrovert. She's kind of observant, and she, but she really wants a new friend so desperately. And she sees this cool new bird come into the, uh, into the scene and she wants to be his best friend so much. So this is a really fun story about learning how to adapt to each other and learning that the best way to have a friend is to be a friend. So that is Kat and Juju. And this is a de debut author illustrator, Katana Bagani. So, and she's, if you really want to smile someday, just go to her website and she's got so many animations with this incredibly adorable character. It will just cheer you right up. So check it out, Kat and Juju. Oh, here we have to see, yes, the bird, the bird goes for the cannonball. So it's a sandcastle kind of day. It's only one is from Tiger Tales. So this is a story about um, littering and taking care of the environment and where you are. So it, we see the rhino here just kind of tossing the piece of trash and, and it really explores um, what happens when everybody does that. It ruins, it ruins the, uh, the world for everyone. So this is a story that talks about different kinds of pollution. It's not just littering, but it's also noise pollution. So, uh, and then, yeah, here's the noise pollution. Yeah, that's not a quiet neighborhood. And then eventually, in the end, they learn how to work together to, um, to keep, take better care of the place where they are. But this is called It's Only One, and there are great tips in the back that you can use with your students. Next up, this is from Readers to Eaters. And if you don't know Readers to Eaters, I'm so excited to be the one to, to introduce you to them. This is a publisher that is really devoted to food literacy. And you're saying, this is in Spanish. Well, it's okay, it's in English as well. Uh, Las Calabecitas de Zora. And it's also going to be coming out in audiobook. But in this case, Zora experiences that thing that if you've ever been a gardener, you know what happens with, with zucchinis, right? So you plant one and the first one, oh my gosh, I got a zucchini, I'm gonna have so much fun with this. And then by the 50th one, you're like, who am I going to give these zucchinis to? I am drowning in zucchini. So she starts, because she's a smart kid, she, smart, she starts a garden exchange. So this is a wonderful book that's won lots of awards. And this author, Catherine Pryor, has done several like this. So let's look at those. She's also done um, Sylvia Spinach, which again is also an audio and also in Spanish. And the Spanish audio is actually out now, it just came out. So I think that's Las Espinacas de Silvia, but feel free to correct me. Just wanna remind the new people who've joined us today that if you comment, uh, let us know what grades you work with and give us a way to contact you. Um, that'd be great. And then also, uh, if you have a question, please let me know. Becca's on, on here, my colleague Becca, and she will let me know if you have questions. So Becca, I have to ask, is everyone seeing the chat windows on here because that's that's blocking up the beautiful pictures oh are, are, you, um, seeing, are you seeing just me or are you seeing angie mary louise becca etc no i well i'm seeing it uh i'm seeing everyone but it's not blocking the photos for me 
Well, I'm just going to kind of move this down here. Does that help? Oh, that didn't change. I think it would be everyone has to personally do it. Okay, so if you, well, that's fine. I just want to make sure that you can see these pictures because frankly, they're gorgeous and none more so than the library bus. This is by Ram Rahman and the illustrations are by Gab Gabriel Grimard. And this is a story that is um, own voices. By Ram is actually from Afghanistan. And this is something that he um, experienced when he was living in Afghanistan. There was a woman there who converted uh, an old bus into a bookmobile. I know you're thinking we've had those forever, but you know, in Afghanistan, so many of the girls are not allowed to be educated. And this is a way that this, um, this woman with, with fire in her heart and um, courage to go out and make sure that the girls in her region had access to books and could read. So just a wonderful, wonderful book that is really inspiring and helps kids understand that education is, is a, it is a right, but for some people it's a privilege and not everybody gets to take advantage of that. So yeah, isn't that gorgeous? No, she's with her mom. That's a good, that's a good thing to be, to be on the library bus. And next up we have the Arabic quilt, and this is another own voices story. So I know that um, I was talking with somebody earlier about um, looking for those diverse books. In this case, um, this little girl has moved to the U.S. and her mother gives her her lunch every day and um, it's, it's Egyptian. And the kids kind of make fun of her, they make fun of the way her mother talks. And she talks to the teacher about this and shows her her journal and, the, and then tells her about a quilt. And the teacher has this brilliant idea of getting the mother and the daughter to write everyone's name in Arabic. And then they stitch it together and make this beautiful, beautiful quilt. And then at the, my last, the last spread is actually my favorite one. And you can see they've done that with all the children who speak who are multilingual in the, uh, in the school. So it celebrates the diversity within that one school that replicated for anyone. So please check out the Arabic quilt. And we also learned some Arabic words, which is always fun. So there you go. A reminder though, whenever you see this little NetGalley sign, that means you can download this book from NetGalley and indicate that you're a member of ILA and that will increase your chances of getting accepted. So why did I put this here? Because this book is on NetGalley. You can get a copy of this to read yourself. This is Calvin Gets the Last Word. It is actually narrated by the dictionary. Have you ever read a book narrated by the dictionary? Calvin and his brother have, you know, your, your typical sibling relationship. And, but he is just, Calvin is fascinated with the dictionary and with all the words. He's always looking for just the right word. So very, very fun. You can see the, the dynamic between the two brothers. And he's on the bus. What could be the right word for the, for, um, being on the bus. Oh yes, mayhem is a good word for being on the bus, right? Of course, I don't know about you, but I look at this and think, ah, oh, they're not wearing masks, but we have to remember this book was done before mask time, so yeah. And at the end, the brother finds the perfect word, and that to just des to describe what he wants to do with his brother. Of course, hilarity is good, but he also learns how to prank his brother, so that's a fun word. Comment during the presentation to win a selection of the titles and let us know what grades you work with, okay? And that way we can curate that for you. So how many of you do epistolary units? You do um, writing or have a pen pal program? Anybody? Um, let us know if you do. This is a new book from Cicada Books, and man, have they got the magic. Um, this is so much fun. It's got the 80s vibe. You notice his, his um, tube socks there. I just think they're hilarious. So this is about a lab rat who starts a pen pal relationship with this um, this person named Annabelle who also is gray and has big ears and they seem to have so much in common and they write letters back and forth and then it turns out that Annabelle doesn't hear oh Annabelle's an elephant. Annabelle doesn't hear from Freddie for a while and she gets really really worried so she hops on a plane as elephants do and discovers that it has been taken over the lab has been taken over by evil lab rats oh, no so when your friend is an elephant, what does she do? She snorts them all up in her trunk and explodes them out. And they never come back to the lab. So this is a hilarious book, really, really fun. And you could be sharing with a, with a class and also as inspiration for, you know, for your own epistolary units. Under the Great Plum Trees from Tiny Owl. And Tiny Owl is a publisher that is based in the UK. Don't worry, everything has been Americanized. Um, 
but it was started by two journalists from Iran. So one of their programs they do is One Story Many Voices, and they take tales from around the world and, and give it a different um, spin and tell the story from a different cultural perspective. So in this case, uh, this book just won the White Raven, which is the award given by the International Federation of Youth Libraries. And that means it's a special, rare, wonderful book. And I think you'll see why when you see some of these illustrations. But um, so Miss Bandari, it lives in the great plum tree. Mr. Magamarch just loves the plums. And, the, and Mr. Magamarch kind of brags about all these great plums and his friend to the wrong person. King Crocodile hears about it and he decides that what could be more delicious than plums? Why, Miss Bandori, who's been eating all these plums. So he tries to get Mr. Megamarch to trick her into uh, putting herself into a place where he can eat her up. But Mr. Megamarch prevails, she is saved, and life goes on. So I Talk Like a River, I think this may be the most beautiful book I've seen, well, in a long, long, long time. Sidney Smith, he has the magic, right? He's been on the New York Times Best Illustrated list. Every year he's been eligible. Um, this is by a poet, Jordan Scott, and this is his first book that he has written. And he is somebody who stutters. So this is about his experience as a child stuttering. And please watch the interview I did with him on, um, on our site, on our, on our virtual booth, because he is so interesting and so passionate, and it's just a wonderful story. Anyway, it's gotten every star it can possibly get. And it's about a boy who's having a bad speech day. And his dad picks him up from school and takes him out into nature and says, you know, you, you talk like a river. Sometimes it may kind of stumble and churn up a little bit, and sometimes it's smooth and even. So it's just a beautiful analogy and a wonderful way to share that kind of experience. Now on to nonfiction picture books. For those of you who've joined us, Please know that we're doing nonfiction, easy reader, chapter books, middle grade, YA, got all the magic here. Okay, COVID helpers. We all need books about COVID right now. In fact, I know some people I'd like to give this book to. Anyway, it's available in English and Spanish. It's from John F. Blair, and it won the prize from Emory. Um, Emory University did a, did a, uh, a contest for somebody to write a book on this topic, and this is the one that won. So it's, it's uh, been vetted by the staff of Emory, which is one of the premier medical institutions in the country, very close to the CDC, but not part of the CDC, and has lots of great information. Comics Easy as ABC is from Toon Books. Toon is magical, and you know, for those kids who really, they just have to enter a book through panels in a comics, and they want to create their own, this is a must-have. So you can see we learn about character development. Actually, for teaching writing, this could be really helpful as well. How bodies work. Um, and then at the end, talking about what works and what doesn't work and how pictures tell the story. This is just a sample of some of the information in here. And the beautiful thing about Toon, because they are so, such a prestigious publisher and they work with so many of these amazing artists, is they got different people to, to participate. So what you're seeing over here is from Jeffrey Hayes. Um, they have they have um, Linears, who won the Eisner for the best youth graphic novel. So, you know, there's a lot of different perspectives, but so much great solid information for kids who want to create their own comics. Next up, we have Underground, and this is such a fun book. So this is Subway Systems Around the World, and all around the world, not just, not just Europe, you know. Um, and it gives all this great this great um, science and math information, but then there's a seek and find element. So you flip a page and then you can look. And also I love the fact that we've got this guy with it wearing a mask. So this book was a little bit prescient, wasn't it? Anyway, lots of, this is the seek and find. So you can look for things. So it can, it can be enjoyed on multiple levels. And I think that's great for kids. You wanna have a book that can be enjoyed again and again. Okay, the thing about bees, speaking about triple threats, Shabazz Larkin, who wrote this book, he wrote the book, he illustrated the book, and he narrated the book. So he was terrified of bees, still kind of was as an adult. And he thought, you know, the best way to deal with the fear is to confront it. So he wrote this story about bees with all this great nonfiction information, but it's also a love letter to his, to his sons, which is just a lovely and wonderful thing. So let's show you some of the information here. And isn't, I 
of the different points of entry. I think that's great for kids who need those different text types to really become engaged with the book. So there you get a sample of that. And at the end, you can learn about your bees and which ones are pollinators and uh, which ones, you know, their aggression level, uh, that kind of thing. So, and then here we have a picture of Shabazz in the studio recording the audio, which is available on Live Oak Media. And you can see his kids down below and his wife. So when you listen to the audio and you hear the bzzz, those are his kids. Isn't that wonderful? What a great thing to have for, you know, just forever. It, it will fill you with joy. This one will fill you with joy. Want to re explain a little bit about our resources tab in our virtual hall, and you can find links to these great resources. If you don't know teachingbooks.net, you can find guides, um, everything, teacher tips, uh, trailers, interviews with authors, how to pronounce somebody's name on teachingbooks.net, and link to it to get a free subscription. So it's, it's gonna last for a few months, so you can check it out. And so many great resources. And KidLit TV, videos with authors and illustrators and just so much goodness. So check that out. Plus there's a teacher guides around specific books in there as well. And downloadable ARCs, I should mention that. Let's go to the forest man from Flower Pot Press. So you've heard that story about the man who saw the deforestation on this island and started year after year planting trees. This is that story done in a beautiful picture book that's gotten starred reviews. So just absolutely gorgeous. And it shows kids how they can make a difference. Anybody can make a difference. And it may not be overnight, but he took an island that was dying and made it a haven for all living creatures. And that was just one person. So one person can truly make a difference. And it's, it's a, just a fun, beautiful book too. And lots of good information. Geography, history, biology, you name it, it's in there. And a timeline. I don't know about you, but I'm a sucker for a good timeline. This raindrop is also from Flower Pot Press. This is from Linda Ragsdale, who is one of my very favorite authors of books for children. She is such a force of positivity and kindness in the world. In this case, she looks at our planet and at the amazing resource that is water. The illustrations are just gorgeous. So, if you have, if it's raining outside here today, I don't know if it is where you are, if you've got a little bit of delta, but every one of those raindrops falling outside right now has a story to tell. And this kind of goes into where that raindrop might have been since the beginning of time. And I love the creative use of text and how it, how it goes around the, the wave here. And all the different places it could be and good solid science in the back. So it can be enjoyed on multiple levels. And here we are with Last, the story of a white rhino. Now this is by Nicola Davies. And you're thinking, I've heard that name before. Yeah, you have. Uh, Nicola Davies wrote Tiny Creature. She wrote The Day the War Came. She's won so many awards and she's just such a resource. And she is a zoologist, so she has the cred. This is a story about the last great Northern white rhino. And he was um, take, taken from his home and taken to a zoo even the rain smelled empty. I know we talk about rain a lot today, but doesn't it just sound heartbreaking to you? So, and then is returned back to the Savannah. Great nonfiction information at the end. And just want to remind everybody, comment, uh, tell us who you are, how we can reach you, what grades you work with, if there's a book that you think looks good and why. Just put those into the chat and you'll be entered into our drawing for a collection of the books here. And I have a feeling that last may be one of those books. Your Place in the Universe. This is by Jason Chin. And if you saw his Grand Canyon book he did a few years ago, oh my goodness, one of the most beautiful picture books I've ever seen. So this is a book about relativity, um, thinking about how things relate to another. So um, that's, a, that's a really hard concept. But Jason Chin, he's got the magic to make it happen. So um, did you know that Ostriches can be nine feet tall, and that's taller than two eight-year-olds standing on each other's shoulders. By the way, one eight-year-old is as tall as nine books. That's just some of the different facts, but you can see how beautiful it is. And don't you love down here where you can see the tiny, tiny Eiffel Tower and the Empire State? Yeah, the tallest buildings in the world, and yet Mount Everest towers above them all. So, and then great, good, solid back matter for the kid who really wants to go that next step. All right, just a reminder to comment. And next we have William Still and his Freedom Stories. Oh my goodness, that's on NetGalley. You can get this book right now on NetGalley and um, you can read it. So this is by 
uh, Don Tate, and he both wrote and illustrated this book. It's gotten so many star reviews already. But William Still is the uh, person who captured the stories of the people who are traveling the Underground Railroad. And it's such an important thing. And without him, we may have lost these stories of all these people as they were uh, trying to make their way to freedom. So it's, it's beautiful, it's readable, um, just exciting. And this is where he hid the stories. He wrote them down and hid them in a crypt in the graveyard. Why didn't I think of that? That's brilliant. So um, yeah, exciting. And then again, fantastic back matter with a beautiful timeline. And this is just a little bit of the back matter. There's so much good stuff in there. Rise from Cage Bird to Poet of the People. This is now a good thing. I've seen this book before. Lee and Lowe did it. Wonderful book. But did you know it's an audio? It's just now releasing from Live Oak Media. It's got a multi-voice narration directed by Dion Graham. And if anybody here is an audiobook fan, you will know Dion Graham. He won the book list Voice of Choice. He did um, he did Trombone Shorty, which which was an Odyssey honor. Um, so many so many fantastic audiobooks. So this will be powerful. And if you want to experience it, then uh, check out check out our publisher spotlight net galley account and next month it will be up there so very exciting also we have the abc's of black history this is from workman and i love this cover if you look at it really closely you'll see that there are all the different topics in here covered by different letters so g is for great migration h is for harlem renaissance t is for the tuskegee tuskegee airmen so um, yeah and this is a very different kind of alphabet book, but what a creative idea. And what a good jumping off point for kids who may want to write their own alphabet book. You don't have to think about it as A is for Apple. That is so boring. You can go so far and do so many cool things. And this is a great model for that. And also it's just a beautiful book and clever and um, emotional and just uh, inspiring. Yeah, good stuff. Now for those kids who really like nonfiction, and if you have those moments in class, you know, when you need like five minutes uh, to fill or you're in a moment of transition, but you still have kids who are there, this is perfect. So you don't have to do these at bedtime. These are five minute stories on nonfiction topics. There are illustrations, but they really are truly short and sweet. And these are all the different topics. So there are 30. You could do one a day for an entire month, and that would be great. And as you can see, it's science. Um, but it's also history, it's animals, a range of different kinds of topics. And really nicely illustrated, and this is from Britannica Books, which just uh, came back as a physical publisher. So they're doing some cool stuff. You can see some ways the book is illustrated. And I just want to remind everyone that we have a Pinterest board with all the books, these books, plus everything else in our booth on Pinterest. So you can get there from Pinterest.com slash pub spotlight ila hyphen 2020 and see all of these books and more so let's go on to easy readers i want to sleep under the stars you know mo willems has the magic right if you have kids who have read all the elephant piggies and they just need more then this is where you want to send them to next unlimited squirrels is mo's next new series this is the third um, the first of course i lost my tooth and then who is the mystery reader so these, this is a little squirrel who wants to be under the stars and everyone wants to help. So I couldn't resist saying more Mo Hoomer, huh? Anyway, yeah, that was a bad joke. You can tell me how bad it was in the chat. Uh, I See the Cat or See the Cat is three stories about a dog. This is so fun, it's kind of meta. Uh, so, so this is Max and he thinks the story should be about him and he is clearly not a cat. He's a little indignant about it, but it breaks the fourth wall, the kids are in on the joke. And it's great for kids who, who are becoming newly confident and to help them build that confidence. So just lots and lots of fun and good illustrations. I mean, who doesn't like rainbow unicorns, right? Obviously Max. And speaking of Max, let's move on to Mac and Mo. Why is it all these characters begin with M? Hmm. So Mac and Mo are hamsters. And in the Science for Surprise, the whole class is, their classroom hamsters, I should say that. The whole class is doing science fair experiments. And Mac and Mo get in on the fun. And they grow their own plant from a bean. Now, anybody who works with really uh, young grades knows this is something everybody does. So what a great way for a kid to read about it. And it also has instructions in the back. 
So it's, it's a perfect accompaniment for that. And uh, yeah, check it out. This, this is a series. It's in the Ready to Read um, series from Simon & Schuster. Sorry, I got something in my eye. I'm just getting emotional about Mac and Moe. Um, this is level one. They also have, um, level one is not the basic level. They actually have a ready to read warm up. Let's make sure I can tell you the truth because there are so many different levels and level readers you have to kind of pay attention to. So, I can try to find that. Here we go. So, ready to read starts with, um, yeah, level one, ready to go is a very basic level, pre-level one, and then level one. So, yes. And these are available in fiction and nonfiction. So, that's helpful to know. Yeah, there you go. They're fun hamsters. Follow us on social media. We have giveaways, we have wonderful uh, opportunities, and we're on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Let's go on a chapter book, shall we? All the Dear Little Animals is winning all the Dear Little Stars. Um, this is from Gecko Press out of New Zealand, and this is so much fun. So some kids are, you know, they're a brother and sister outside, and they see a dead bumblebee. Um, which is a little bit sadder now than it used to be. But anyway, they see the dead bumblebee and they decide they're going to have a funeral for it. So they do. They, they uh, find their, their neighborhood friend and he is the appointed mourner. Um, the little boy is going to write the eulogy and of course the, the big sister is the, organizing the whole funeral. And they have so much fun doing that that they look for all the dead animals and insects they can and spend a day doing that. And then the next day they do something else. Very, very fun. It really captures, uh, as I said, the quick joys of childhood. Illustrations are really fun. If you know the Detective Gordon books, um, they're written by the person who did those and illustrated by the My Happy Life books that have been ALA notables and all those books. Anyway, lovely and fun. So Giger the Robot goes to school. This is a new uh, line from Simon & Schuster. It's called Quicks, Fast Fun Reads. These are early chapter books for emergent readers. So there are already 33 available in this series, and we've got lots of great resources. So check it out uh, on our resources tab at Jarrett Lerner, who's the author of this book. It's just great. It's so much fun stuff. So yeah, kind of Amelia Bedelia meets House of Robots, for sure, but just fun. He goes to school, and it is not robot school. It is kid school. So there you go, as you can see. Stink. You all probably know Stink, because there have been 12 Stink books. You certainly know Stink's big sister, Judy Moody. So in this case, uh, it's all about um, spiders and arachnophobia, or not. We're just being fascinated with them. But this is the new Stink. It's just fun to say that. And it also involves, um, shows, shows how to do some origami. So there's a little extra bonus in this one. And then you meet the spiders, and this is really good, solid information that is true. There really is a crab spider, a twig spider. These are, these are things. Next up, we have Duck Days. And Duck Days is from Pajama Press. And Slug Days, which was the first book, was an autism, uh, it was a book about a girl who's on a spectrum. And she, um, it, it's, a, it's illustrated, but it also really conveys what that experience is like. So for kids who are on the spectrum, they can see themselves in it. And for their classmates, it helps them understand what they're going through. Uh, in Penguin Days, she has to be a flower girl, and that has its own set of problems. And then in Duck Days, she, uh, she's getting bullied. And, her, and also her best friend has a new friend. And, you know, it's always hard when you have that dynamic where there are three, where there used to be two. And she does learn how to let those, those mean words roll off her like, a, like the water off a duck's back. So this is from Pajama Press, and it's a wonderful series. So check it out. Reindeer Girl. Uh, these, this is from Hollywood. So, you know the Pet Rescue Adventures, so many lost kittens and puppies. So those are from Holly Webb. And this is her new series called Winter Journeys. And in this one, there's a girl named Lodja who goes back in time to when her grandmother was a daughter, was a little girl. And she, uh, she learns how to take care of the reindeer and has an adventure back in time. It's just a lovely, um, gentle story, but there's also a little bit, you know, it's, it's exciting. And also you learn something about what it's like to live in the far north. So a gorgeous illustrated um, reader, for sure. I feel like there's a little bit of Jan Breton here too, which is lovely. Middle grade, 
premeditated myrtle. These are so much fun. So I love a good cozy mystery. But you know, kids can love good cozy mysteries too. This is a Victorian girl who is just almost too smart for her own good. That's okay. It's a, she's a strong female character, yay. And she just is so ingenious. This is from Algonquin Young Readers. Uh, they did the, the Girl Who Drank the Moon. They really are so good at this middle grade level. So check them out. And I think you can get some resources from that on our, on our page, on our island booth. So check it out. The Candy Mafia. Oh my goodness, this one's on Meg Kelly. So while we're talking about sleuthing girls, let's talk about the town where they have a competition on candy. So uh, what happens, and I think somebody just turned their mic on. So you might want to mute yourself. If you can, mute yourself, and we'll keep talking. Okay, thank you very much. So the Candy Mafia is about a, is a town where they outlaw candy. It's kind of a crime fiction for kids. It's got a, a film noir sort of thing going on, but it's also really, really funny, and it's illustrated. So not lavishly illustrated, but, you know, doesn't this look like your private eye, usual inner encounter with the, the bully who comes in and says, hey, yeah, you're in my town. But it's very fun very very silly and uh and it's got a good mystery okay i'm excited to show you mr invincible this is a graphic novel this won the best graphic novel for middle grade readers at the bologna children's book fair so this is the international book fair so it's it considers books from all over the world this is the first year that they actually had a graphic novel category and they considered books for multiple years. So basically, this they said this is the best graphic novel in several years for this age range. So why is it so special? Well, look closely at the panels here. Mr. Invincible, he may not be really um, strong, but he can affect space and time and can travel between the panels. So you can see how he needs something in the top, and he passes it to himself through all the different panels. So look down here. This is just a sample of how he affects things. It is fun and clever and just ingenious. Um, yeah, doesn't like what happens, he just rips it out of the book. This is not to encourage kids to rip it out of the book, but it is pretty dark fun. So that's Mr. Invincible. Just a reminder to comment during the presentation to win, get a chance to win a selection of these titles. Let us know what grades you work with and we can curate your collection for you if you're one of the winners. Moving on to Wild Thing, this is from a Blaze Comics, which is distributed by Diamond. And this is kind of an homage to Call the Wild. Uh, this, this poor dog is in a shelter and he's taken by somebody, but he's taken to be a working dog. And guess what he gets to be? He's, a sh he's got to herd all of these sheep, and this is not what he knows how to do, and he's kind of afraid of them. Um, he's not treated well. So he manages to escape, and then he's adopted by a, a wolf pack and learns how to survive as a wolf. So yeah, lots going on there. It's not for the tenderhearted, but it is certainly very exciting. The Ink Bird Enigma is another graphic novel, and this is from Gecko Press in New Zealand. So Jonathan King is actually a, a filmmaker in New Zealand, which seems to do a really good job of growing filmmakers. If you think about it, storyboarding is very much like a graphic novel. So it makes a lot of sense that a graphic novel would be coming from somebody who is a filmmaker. In this case, this is an action-packed adventure mystery. Um, two kids uh, in, a, in a small town that is dominated by one guy. I think of him as kind of like a Mr. Potter from It's a Wonderful Life. And they hear, a, a, they're, you can see how they're being bullied here. And then they hear a siren going by in an ambulance and a guy is taken off this boat. And uh, what is that on his leg? It's a mysterious tentacle wrapping his leg and she gets a picture of it and they don't like the fact that she's got evidence of what is happening. So it's very adventurous. It's, um, they have to sneak into a warehouse and find out what's happening. And what is the Inkberg Enigma? Spoiler alert, moving on. It was that picture in the last bottom part there. Anne of Green Gables. So you're thinking, I know this book. I've seen this book before, but have you seen the manga classics version? This is the only one that is approved by the Ellen Montgomery Estate. It's coming out this month and it is just so beautiful. I just have to show you how pretty it is. And it explains how to read manga. So, you know, it's in the true Japanese style where it starts at the back and goes towards the front. A little counterintuitive for those of us who were not raised with that, but you can see how beautiful it is and it preserves a lot of the original dialogue. 
really fun. And then Tristan Strong Destroys the World. I hope you all know these books. If you don't, I'm so excited to be the one to tell you about it. This is from Disney. And Kwame Mbalia uh, became a New York Times bestselling author with his first book. I mean, how amazing is that? Which was Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. Uh, it was a Credit Scott King honor uh, in the author category, but it is just so much fun and so nonstop action. Um, it's a seventh grader who enlists the help of African gods and black folktale heroes when his grandmother is abducted. So it's got that whole, you know, gotta see grandma thing going on, but he, he's got all the help. He's got all the help. So for fans of, of the Black Panther books, this is a natural, and it's, it's, a, it's middle grade, but it is certainly, it's got a good page count. So for that kid who's motivated to read, this is perfect for them. So middle grade nonfiction, yes. Black Heroes of the Wild West. This is from Toon, who did Comics Easy as ABC, you saw earlier. Look, it's on NetGalley. You can download this book. Anybody can download this book. So check it out. What they did here, James Otis Smith, um, this was his idea. This whole book was his idea. And he picked three people from the Wild West during the Reconstruction Era. Um, you can watch an interview with him next week on our ILA virtual booth at publisherspotlight.com. And he looks at uh, Stagecoach Mary, Bass Reeves, and Bob Lemons. Now, you may have heard of Bass Reeves because there have been a few books about him, but the other two may be new to you. And Kadir Nelson did the introduction, which is pretty awesome. So here it gives you an idea of how it looks. Also, this is your review copy, in case you didn't know that. So really gripping, exciting. Um, there's Bass Reeves. He does look kind of like the Lone Ranger, doesn't it? Maybe he was the model for that. Very, very exciting and fantastic information in the back, including a timeline. Like I told you, I'm really into timelines. So just a reminder to comment during the live presentation for a chance to win a selection of future titles. Let me know if you're also into timelines, or maybe that's just me. I don't know. Our next graphic novel, our graphic nonfiction, is How I Survived Four Nights on the Ice. Now, Inhabit Media is an amazing publisher. They're based in Toronto and in Igalowit, which is in Nunavut, up in northern Canada. And its own voices with Inuit um, people. It talks about uh, their books are usually on Inuit uh, culture and traditions. And this is a true story of an Inuit elder who was stranded for four nights on an ice floe and how he survived that. So it's gripping. I would pair this with Hatchet if I were you. And again, own voices. It's got the magic. And you know he survived. Now this is from Story Press, and I just think this is a great book. It's How to Be a Person, 65 hugely useful, super important skills to learn before you're grown up. So these are things for kids who may have to be a little bit more responsible than maybe in the past. And I think we're kind of living through a time right now where some kids are having to be responsible for younger siblings, they're having to do things like laundry. Um, yeah. Uh, taking care of other people, and then something that everybody should know how to do, how to plunge a toilet. True, it's true, right? So these are just a few of the things, but be sure to check that book out. And Becca's favorite, we were talking about this before we got started, the Britannica All New Kids Encyclopedia, What We Know and What We Don't. So this is just a huge resource um, put together by Britannica Books and what, and what on Earth, and it's so much fun. So here are the contents. You can see the different categories, universe, earth, material world, living world, being human, ancient civilizations, medieval to modern, today's world and beyond. Why am I spending time on this? Because next week we have the editor of this will be with us and he will run us through a little quiz on these different topics. And whoever wins will get the deluxe edition, which is uh, a limited edition with a slipcase. It's gorgeous. So be sure to come back next week for that. And this gives you an idea of, what's, of what the pages look like. I mean, encyclopedias were not nearly this beautiful when I was a kid. I loved them, but they weren't gorgeous to look at. And there you go. Yeah, that's disgusting. Just thought I'd give you some nightmares tonight. You're welcome. Independent learning. All right, so these books, Take Me to Museums, are, it's by Mary Richards. And Mary Richards used to be the director of publications for the Tate Museum in London. And the thing she was most passionate about was helping kids access the wonderfulness that's in a museum. So this is a book that can be used with any museum, not just the Tate Museum, but any museum. 
And as kids are doing this virtual learning right now, you can do museum tours. So you could actually do this book with a museum um, tour and have the whole experience of it. It contains information about museums in general, but also it's an activity guide. So that's why I say independent learners. I showed this to Donald and Miller and she was really, she was really intrigued by this one. So uh, yeah, it's very exciting. Oh, there's another timeline. Yeah, I know, I love timelines. On to young adult, we're coming up on the end. Each of us a desert. So this is from Tour Team. And this is LGBTQ, IA+, all those things. So this is a story about, uh, I have to make sure I'm pronouncing, I'm probably mispronouncing this. So Chito, who is doomed to wander the desert alone. And she has to whisper the stories of the place where she, of, of her town into the arid winds of the desert in order for them to be dispelled. And the thing she wants more than anything else is a kindred spirit. She just, she's lonely. She's desperately alone. So um, this is a story with very much a, a, a feel like a, it's in Mesoamerica kind of thing. Uh, definitely it's uh, fantasy. And Marco Shiro did um, Anger is a Gift, which was a big award winner. So this is beautiful and mysterious. And it, I love the way it uses the Spanish in the book because you can figure it out from context. and Maybe you can learn a little bit of Spanish. And if you're a Spanish speaker, then it will make you feel special and seen. So A Song Below Water, um, this is a wonderful empowerment story. Black mermaids, and sirens, and, it's, and of course it's all with the, um, with understanding that there is racism and sexism, sexism in the world, and this is a girl who has to keep her voice silent, but it's a very empowering story. So it's also on NetGalley, you'll want to check that out. It's on NetGalley, look for it, enjoy it, and that is our presentation. Be sure to comment. Let us know what grades you work with so that you can win, have a chance to win these books and I'll try to curate a collection for you if you are a winner. And join us for next week when we have Christopher Lloyd here and the quiz. And uh, well, I'll turn off the, the sharing and if you have any questions for me right now, I would be delighted to take them. Thanks so much for joining us.